What is up guys? Thank you so much for tuning back into another episode of my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about all things Big Brother, specifically Memphis's HOH week and the inevitable eviction from last Thursday. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Haley Brocker. I was on season 20 of Big Brother. For those of you that do know me and are returning, I love you so much. So first and foremost, if you haven't seen Thursday Night's Eviction, stop this episode right now because you are going to be spoiled. Okay, cool. So everyone here is on the same page. Thursday night, very, very sadly, Nicole A. left. From a perspective of gameplay, when it comes to Memphis this week, I believe from a game perspective, Memphis took one of the easiest routes. When you think about it, Memphis is covered on a lot of different sides. He's in a very large alliance and he needed to take the path of least resistance. With that being said, I think Memphis could have shot himself in the foot in a couple different ways. Memphis got extremely power crazy. He was walking around that house like he was gonna be HOH for the rest of the summer. Instead of taking the high road and not making it a personal aspect, he took the opportunity during his HOH speech to single out and kind of ruffle some feathers when it comes to David. And that didn't sit well with most of the house. I think Memphis came across very arrogant this week. That could just be his personality, but as a fan from the outside looking in, didn't love it and I couldn't imagine being in the house and loving it either. On the topic of Memphis, I think while he is in a very strong big alliance, that alliance is going to explode within a few weeks. There's already so much distrust within the group. I don't know how they can stay together and trust each other in this game when it's already week two and they're gossiping about one another. Overall, I think Memphis made a smart play when it comes to his gameplay. I think he took the path of least resistance, but I will say he fumbled the bag when it came to his personality and getting so power crazy that he turned into this arrogant guy that no one really wanted to be around most of the week. Moving on to his nominations. So as we all know, he nominated Nicole and David and he also then went on to win the veto and kept them there. These two nominees, I feel like, were an easy choice for him because this was the newest cast. David had the least amount of time in that house, and he didn't have any loyalties to Nicole. I will say, however, it was extremely hard to watch because I love both of those players so, so dearly. So this week was very difficult to watch for a couple different reasons. We'll start with David. David started the week off pretty strong. He had a level head. He wasn't doing anything too crazy, but then he decided to rub Dave on the wrong way for whatever reason and basically tell her, hey, chill out, stop campaigning for me so hard. I don't need you. First of all, in what universe, David, in what universe do you tell someone to stop campaigning so hard for you? Come on. It didn't set well with her and she actually ended up being pretty conflicted about her vote. Obviously it didn't hurt him too bad as we saw the outcome of the vote, but I do think that he kind of hurt himself with that. And also he showed his cards in showing how comfortable he was with being on the block. He wasn't stressing, he wasn't really that worried about it, and I think everyone could see that, which means everyone is gonna catch on that he feels safe. Let's move on to Nicole. This was the hardest one to watch, so I love Nicole so dearly. As you all know, she got America's Favorite last year. In my personal opinion, she was on the full time of the season within less than a year ago. When you go on that show, you come off with so much emotional baggage. I don't think that's something you just recover from. I really don't. And I don't think that she was allowed enough time to decompress and work through all that emotional baggage. If you think back to season 21, for those of you who watched, she never felt safe. She never felt like she had a confidant. She definitely always had someone that was lying to her, always had someone out to get her. And I think she carried that over to this season. So her distrust in Janelle and Kaser was understandable to a point of that paranoia is something that really messes up your ability to see clearly. So I think that's a lot of the reason we saw her break down the way she did and lose trust in the only two people that were really campaigning for her because in her mind, what if these people are just saying this and they're actually stabbing me in the back? 
So it could have been that she just didn't want to be played. She didn't want to be played. She didn't want to put all of her trust in Janelle and Kaser and then look like an idiot. So she tried to flip it to where she doesn't trust them at all. Also, Kevin had a big hand in her paranoia this week. He was always in her ear telling her, I don't know if I would trust Janelle. I don't know if I could trust Kaser. He was giving her these wild scenarios that never happened and getting in her head. And she really trusted Kevin. So his word and his opinion went really far with her. So he definitely got in her head and messed her game up even further. With that being said, I have never in the entire time that I've seen these seasons, I'm a super, super fan. I've never seen someone fight so hard to stay in that house. In most scenarios, the last night, there's not a ton of campaigning to do because the week prior leading up to that has kind of set the stone. She never gave up. Nicole A never gave up. She never threw her towel in. She was trying until the very last second, which is something I think we can all respect and we can all admire. With that being said, I have seen a lot of hate on Twitter. I've seen a lot of people that have been disgruntled with Nicole and let's address it. I posted a tweet a few days ago talking about Nicole and kind of just addressing the fact that she hasn't decompressed from her season and I got a lot of feedback from it. A lot of people think that that's not justification for her to be so against Janelle. A lot of people see my point. At the end of the day, Nicole A did the best she could with what she was working with. So she did the best she could making a judgment call on people she knew nothing about. She doesn't know Janelle. She doesn't know Kaser on any other level. So she made her own judgment call with the information she was given. Keep in mind, I think this information was muddled from her previous experience less than a year ago. And I think there's something to be said for someone trying their best and giving their all. Regardless if it's what we as fans wanted to see, she tried her best. And it absolutely kills me at the thought of anyone saying that that is less than because she did the best she could. Obviously, Obviously, we would all like to think we would get in that house and think rationally and figure out what was going on. We have pieces of the puzzle the house guests don't have. And when it comes down to it, Nicole has a huge heart. She's a great person and she did the best she could. Unfortunately, her best was not good enough and she was evicted this week. Most of the votes ended up being as we expected. The only thing that kind of threw us all for a loop, I think, was Enzo's vote. Originally, I thought he had this big super master plan to flip the vote and pin it on someone else but honestly I don't even think he was thinking that far I think he just kind of wanted to mess things up and be difficult and chaotic so I really don't think there's much to dissect there and then we had the HOH so again if you haven't seen Thursday's episode stop the video now because I'm gonna spoil it for you so we have a Tyler HOH Janelle was so close to winning, it makes me sick to my stomach. She needed this HOH more than any HOH she's ever needed. Unfortunately, she did not get it. So what can we expect this week with a Tyler HOH? I think that there's one route that's very obvious for him and very easy for him. Right now, the entire house is against Jacer, Janelle and Kaser. So it would make the most sense to put them up beside each other. As a player, does it make the most sense for Tyler? Yes. It's very hard for me because I'm very conflicted with this week. I want Tyler to do well, just like I want Bailey to do well. But on the other hand, I really, really did not want to see Janelle or Kaser leave this week. So it's really difficult for me. But at the end of the day, everyone has to go home except for one person, right? So I'm glad Tyler got the HOH. I'm glad he's safe this week. But honestly, I think even if he wouldn't have won, he would have been safe. So I do question the fact if it was necessary for him to win this HOH. I think there's probably a 15% chance that we could get a Memphis back door. I definitely think Tyler was rubbed the wrong way last week with Memphis and his whole HOH parade, but I really don't see that happening unless the tides just completely turn. I think one of the two that are put on the block, Janelle or Kaser, will be going home this week and I hate to say it out loud. Other than that, I think there's one more key point I would like to touch on that I think was a defining moment for someone's game and that is Christmas saving Ian. Imagine a scenario where Christmas does not win safety suite and Ian is not kept safe. I am willing to bet a lot of money that Memphis would have either A, originally placed him on the block or B, backdoored him. And I think this would be a whole different situation and I think there's a possibility Ian could have been walking out the door on Thursday. I think we're gonna look back on that and see that that was a very defining moment for Ian's game and Christmas kept him in this game for however long he ends up staying. So let's remember that and come back to it 
when we need to. With that being said, I'm actually pretty content with this season. It's always fun to root for the underdogs and Janelle and Case are such icons, but this is a great cast. So in the event that we lose one of them this week, oh, <sighs> It's gonna be fine. We're gonna keep on trucking. Ugh, it's literally so I can't even say this without being frustrated. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to lose Janelle or Kaser this week. They are making the season for me. I love to root for the underdog and it even helps when your underdogs are so iconic. So it's extremely frustrating for me. I'm so frustrated. Ugh. Anyway, we're just gonna have to watch how the rest of this week unfolds. I think either way, Tyler's gonna set himself up nicely for the next few weeks, and I'm excited to see how far my BB20 fam can actually get, and hopefully Jacer can pull a rabbit out of the hat and stay another week. With that being said, thank you so much for tuning back in, guys. This video is a little shorter because I didn't really have too much to cover. Hopefully we have an exciting week ahead of us, and we have a lot more to talk about next week. So thank you so much for tuning in. As always, Always, don't forget to subscribe like comment and go to all of my other socials you know the drill also for those of you who want more frequent Big Brother updates and more content from me personally about my personal life you can always go subscribe to my patreon patreon.com slash Haley Brocker and you can find it all there love you guys so much and see you next week